Welcome to Multidimensional Health with Dr. Tony. I am so happy that you are joining me today. I have a great show for you today. Hugo Anguiano, a holistic health practitioner and instructor, is joining me once more on the show. Hugo can be reached for virtual consultations from anywhere in the world via email at holistichugo at gmail.com or on Facebook and Instagram. Ancient health wisdom tells us that taking care of your life is the most important work as a human being. And Hugh is here to share with us his holistic definition of what it means to be truly healthy. And you will be surprised to know that being healthy is more than just the absence of disease. And Hugo will tell us what it takes to be healthy. Welcome, Hugo, to the show. I am so happy to, ha to have you back with us. Hello. Thank you, Tony. I'm so happy to be here again all the way from Italy. It's very exciting for me. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I, the last show that we did was amazing, and everybody wanted, had questions, so I'm glad that you're back. Great. Wonderful. Me too. Me too. And today, we're going to talk about health and what is health, and the most important thing, which I think a lot of us don't know is, am I healthy? Sometimes we think we're healthy, but we really <laughs> don't know. I mean, even yesterday, I was talking to a client, and, she, and I mentioned that uh, sugar was a toxin, and she looked at me, she's like, Sugar is bad for me. And I thought everybody knew that sugar wasn't healthy. And so we sometimes make assumptions that, uh, that everybody knows what we know. So it's kind of good to get an idea of, well, what is healthy? What does healthy look like? And that's what you're here. You're going to talk to us about what is health. Yes. And that's, that's really the, the, the first question is, you know, what, what, how do we define health? Um, I, I taught a class for many years and uh, one of the first things that I would ask people, and I would give them like 10 or 15 minutes to think about it, is I would ask everybody to write down where the definition of health was. And then we would discuss it as a class. And of course, you know, part of my, my job as a teacher uh, was, was to sort of to play sort of devil's advocate. And no matter what they said, to try to find a way to go around it. Uh, but because I was able to talk that class for, for, for so long, almost, almost 30 years, um, I, I really, it really helped me figure out what, how I define health. And so I, I have three different um, options to, to present to you. Uh, one of them, the first one comes from actually looking, uh, I looked in the dictionary. This is one of the, the first things that I found out many years ago and it really blew my mind. I looked up in the dictionary for the, for the roots, for the etymology of the words health, heal, and holy. And I was really surprised to find out that they all come from the same root. And that root is the word sacred. Oh, wow. And the word sacred, the etymology for the word sacred means to make whole, to make complete. So from this perspective of just looking at the words and looking at the actual etymology of the words, when I'm trying, when I'm speaking about health, I'm speaking about techniques that we can use to become a whole person. If somebody says they're trying to become healthy, they've chosen to become healthy, according to this definition, what they're really saying is that they have chosen to become a whole human being, a complete person. And when we say that somebody is holy, a saint in a particular spiritual or religious tradition, According to, to this way of looking at the words and their meaning, it, what it really means is that that person was a complete human being, that they were mm -hmm. sacred. So all of these ideas that we have about becoming healthy, what they really come down to is a, in a way to, to develop a, a, a sacredness for our life. And, a, 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 you know, taking it away from religion, which a lot of people may turn away mm -hmm. from, it really has nothing to do with religion. Sacredness really just means becoming a complete human being and i really like that because we talk about holistic health and mm -hmm. in a way if health actually means to become whole holistic mm -hmm. also means that so it's almost it's almost a, a, a repeat of the same uh -huh. word to holistic health so that's one perspective that i talked about in, in in my classes and that i talk about with my clients the other perspective is a perspective that comes from ancient japanese tradition and uh, in, in, in this tr Japanese tradition, they define health as having a capacity for joy, 
a long, healthy life full of amusing, interesting, brilliant experiences, to have freedom from anxiety and worry about money. Wow. Can you imagine wow. that? <laughs> we all want that. Oh my God. The whole thing, not just the money part. <laughs> because, you know, because it's interesting because uh, a lot of people have money, but, but they worry about losing the money. Mm -hmm. And the people that don't have money worry and they're anxious about not being able to pay their bills. So there's this anxiety. So from this definition, I really loved it, is to, to, not, to not have anxiety and to not worry about, about money, mm -hmm. whether you have it or you don't. Uh, it also tells us that uh, having health means to have the instinctive capacity for survival. Hmm. Avoiding accidents and illnesses that cause premature death. So Interesting. automatically, instinctively staying away from doing things or participating in activities that would harm our health. There's a, I heard a definition. I, I wish I, I knew who it, it was. I've looked it up and I haven't been able to find anything. So <clears throat> I think it was a comedian because it's, for me, it's pretty funny. When they asked him what the definition of health was, uh, this person said, health is really just the rate at which you die. <laughs> If you're healthy, you take longer to die. If you're unhealthy, you die faster, right? So having an instinctive capacity for survival, to, do, to avoid doing the things that make you ill. Uh, a Tibetan teacher once said that uh, being healthy was very easy. He said, all you have to do is avoid doing anything that's bad for you. Boy, and that's so <laughs> hard for us. I don't, I, mean, I don't understand why, but for some reason, it is hard to avoid those things. It's amazing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Very, very difficult. Uh, so to go on with this definition, it says that also having a loving capacity to understand and accept the infinite order of the universe at all times, mm -hmm. at all levels. I guess another way to say that would be to trust in the universe. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, there's a, a, a phrase that I like that, I, that I, I use a lot, and I think it's from a, from a Rolling Stones song. And it says, if you look around, you may find that you're not, you don't always get what you want, but you always get what you need. <laughs> yes. You know, and sometimes we don't like what we need. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, we want mm -hmm. something else, but we always have what we need, whether, we, what, whether what we need is to, to have a roof over our head and to have food or to not. Yes. Right. That's, that's what we get. So that, that's another definition of health that I really like. Uh, and the third one that I have, this one comes from China, and this, you might be familiar with the, uh, what they call the five elements in the, in the Chinese way of looking at health. And this is uh, the idea that everything in the universe uh, is, is, it happens because of one of five different vibratory experiences in the universe and their interaction with each other. Mm -hmm. And they correspond to the five seasons like winter, spring, summer, early fall and late fall. And each one has organs that are associated with it. Uh, in this perspective, the, the soil element, the earth element, is associated with the organs of the spleen, the pancreas, and the mm -hmm. stomach. Uh, and the spleen is, in this way of looking at it, is associated with healing in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about what is health, right? Do we heal in a timely manner? We're, we're told by, by many experts nowadays, people like Deepak Chopra and other people that are very famous that, that talk and write about health, that, uh, that every cell of the skin of our body, it, it dies and is replaced every four weeks. Mm -hmm. So no matter how old we are, our skin cannot be older than four weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, every five days, uh, the stomach lining is completely replaced. Mm -hmm. Every six weeks, we get a brand new liver. Every cell mm -hmm. in the liver has died and been reborn, been replaced. Every seven to 12 days, all the white blood cells, which are the, the, the cells that help us stay healthy, that find organisms and pathogens in our body that are harmful to us and neutralize it, those are replaced every seven to 12 days, which is why most colds and flus last between a week to two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, the red blood cells, right? They're, they're replaced every, every four months, every 120 days. And our skeleton is replaced every seven years. Mm -hmm. So do we heal in a timely manner? If we have a condition that is affecting our skin, if we're healing in a timely manner, really, technically, in four weeks, it should be gone. Mm -hmm. Or we should notice some improvement. Mm 
Mm -hmm. If we have a condition of our bones, of our uh, some kind of a, a disease of the bones, really technically, if we re if we did the right things in seven years mm -hmm. or seven years, which is a long time uh, to stick to something, we should see some signs. Uh, the other organ that is associated with the soil element is the pancreas and uh, the pancreas in the body, among other things, it regulates our blood sugar levels. And the perspective that we look at it from is that having efficient blood sugar levels uh, gives us appropriate emotional responses. Mm -hmm. And if you've ever had low blood sugar, yes. uh, you, you know how that can be. You, know, yes. you see a child who gets a lot of sugar and then they crash. Emotions can be crazy. Yeah. So do we have appropriate emotional responses uh, to, to our life activities? You know, somebody can say something to us. Uh, th that takes five seconds to say, and two years later, we're still brooding over it. Right? That's not an efficient <laughs> emotional response. Yes. Um, the last one in, in this perspective is the stomach. And the stomach literally, uh, in the Chinese perspective, cooks everything that we eat so we can get the nutrition from our food. And so it provides us with the energy to live our everyday life activities. Right? I'm not talking about running a marathon. I'm talking about getting to the top of the stairs and not being exhausted. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about working a full day and coming home and still have enough energy to socialize. You know, it's very, it's very often that uh, we, we're, we're so tired that if somebody invites us to go to a particular event, we don't have the energy to socialize mm -hmm. with people. Or we may want to go, but if we find out that a particular person is going to be there, we say something like, you know what, I don't have energy to deal with that person today. Mm -hmm. Right? So do we have enough energy to live our everyday life experiences? And so if we have any of these, if we have a sense of sacredness in our life, or if we experience joy in our life and, uh, you know, uh, amusing experiences and freedom and anxiety for money, or, or if we heal in a timely manner, if we have appropriate emotional responses and uh, the, the right en uh, uh, energy to live our everyday life experiences, these are some ideas that can help us figure out what the definition of health is. Mm -hmm. uh, very often, and, and I've, I've always been amazed by this, uh, you know, many people believe that being healthy means that you can run at a certain speed mm -hmm. for a certain amount of time, mm -hmm. or that you can do a particular exercise for so many different, so many uh, repetitions, mm -hmm. or you can lift so much weight, or that you have a particular look to your body. Mm -hmm. But many people have the ability to, to lift a particular amount of weight a certain number of times and they have the right look to their body, but they don't heal in a healthy manner. Mm -hmm. They don't have appropriate emotional responses. Uh, they, they don't have enough energy. Many of these people cannot function without energy drinks or coffee or mm -hmm. something like that. So uh, you know, it's, it's interesting uh, to develop, first of all, what, what is our definition of health? Mm -hmm. Yes, and it's, it's interesting that you say that because I, I was, as you know, I was paddleboarding this morning with a friend and we were talking about COVID and she's like, well, healthy people get sick too. And she was mentioning how um, this person that was running marathons got sick and it was in a coma with COVID for a month. And I said, you don't know if he was really, truly healthy. And I said, you know, because we really don't know. We don't know what he ate. What was his habits? Did he have, like you said, an emotional response? Does he have inflammation in his body? Usually people that do marath marathons push their body to the limit, which is kind of similar to what we we're talking about before, not to push over the 70%, you know. They tend right. to go yes, yes. a lot more, right? They push over not only the 70, but even they do 110, you know, just to make right. it up. And so they're pushing their body. So we don't know if they are really healthy just because they run a marathon or they look healthy. That doesn't mean that it's healthy. So how do we know if we're healthy? So how do I know if I'm healthy? So I'm going to go back to visit those definitions that I gave a little while ago about uh, what, what is health. If we look at the root of the word, is, is there a sacredness to my life? And uh, there, there's a, a Japanese samurai physician who wrote a book that was translated for the first time, I believe about a year and a half, maybe two years ago. And in, in it, he gives advice to samurais and to emperors about health. And he says, taking care of your life is your most important work as a human being. Mm -hmm. You know, if we have that attitude in our lives, then that's a healthy attitude. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a sign that we may be healthy, right? Uh, if we look at the other definition that I gave, the, uh, the Japanese definition about having a capacity for joy 
a long, healthy life full of amusing, interesting, brilliant experiences. If I have all of those happening in my life, then that's a sign that I am healthy, or at least I'm on a path to becoming healthier. If we look at the Chinese perspective with the soil element, uh, do I heal in a timely manner? Mm -hmm. I, I have a friend, a gentleman who's in his late 70s and he's a surfer. And one day surfing, he cut his eye, ankle in the beach. It took him two years for the wound to heal. So we know that at some level he was healthy because he didn't die of it. Mm -hmm. But really, the skin should have ideally should have healed in four weeks. All mm -hmm. of the white blood cells would have, would have been replaced in seven to 12 days. So we know there was some health at some level, but not. I guess maybe a way to say it is optimum health. There was an optimum health. Uh, you know, do I have a, a appropriate emotional responses? Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we do things in our life that are very tragic and uh, we experience pain and suffering. And when we're telling somebody about it, we laugh. Mm -hmm. That's not an appropriate, that's what in Chinese uh, way of looking at health, they would call inappropriate emotions. Mm -hmm. So that would, that would indicate that no, we're, we're not quite as healthy as we can be. And uh, again, continuing with the Chinese perspective, do I have any en energy to live my everyday life experiences? You know, I used to always tell my students and I tell my clients, especially here in Italy, you know, in Italy, everybody drinks coffee. You go mm -hmm. to somebody's home at any time of the day and the first thing they offer you is, is coffee. And I always tell people, you know, if you really want to find out if you're really healthy, if you really have the right of, amount of energy to live your life, skip coffee for a week. <laughs> don't have any coffee, don't have any tea, don't have any energy drinks and see how you feel. And then that'll give you a, true, a truer perspective of, uh, you know, whether you're really healthy or not. How healthy are you in, in that idea? Uh, this also leads to, you know, having enough energy to live our everyday life experiences. Also leads to the idea of, of having a healthy appetite. Mm -hmm. Not only a healthy appetite for food, but your mouth waters when you see the food that you're about to eat or you walk into, into your mother's home and she's cooking and as soon as you smell the food, you, you have this appetite for this food. But can you imagine having an appetite for your life experiences? Mm -hmm. In the same way, yes. Imagine a child, you, you, you have children, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, imagine a child who's going to go to Disneyland in the morning and at four in the morning, they're asking you if it's already time to go because they're so hungry to go. Imagine having that kind of appetite to go to work, mm -hmm. to go to school, to get on our uh, bumper to bumper, hour drive to work and back home. That's also a sign of, of healthy. So, you know, do, do, do I have a sacredness, uh, a sacred attitude to my life? Do I consider taking care of my life as the most important work that I have as a human being. These are some of the things that can help me figure out if I'm healthy or not. And so what do we do uh, if we go through that list and we don't, we realize, uh Oh, I don't think I'm healthy. <laughs> what are the next steps? Yeah, of course, the, the very first step is, is to go through those steps, to ask yourself those questions, which many people don't. Many people mm -hmm. are happy believing that they're healthy because they can, they can run a certain amount of time at a certain speed. I, I see a lot of my friends on Facebook that they say that during this quarantine time, they've decided to become healthy. And all you see is, uh, you know, last, last week it took, took me this long to run around the block. I can do it in this time. I was lifting this much, now I'm lifting this much, I'm doing these things. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's uh, first of all, asking yourself, am I healthy? What is really, what does health really mean to you? And that's why I used to do that exercise with my students to not necessarily to find out an answer, but at least to start thinking in that mm -hmm. direction, right? But once you find out that once you develop a, a, a good holistic uh, idea of what health is, uh, and you find out that you don't really meet those needs, what you can do is, first of all, is you have a choice. Mm -hmm. And that choice is either to make a change or to continue on the path that you're on. N neither one of it is, is, is better than the other because it's really 
uh, part of, of our of our life. It's part of you know some people, many people believe in karma. It's part of the reason that we that we're here. Some of us will learn by making changes. Some of us will learn by not making changes about our life. So, if I choose to stay and not make any changes, I can do it very simply, ignoring everything else and just continuing it on the path. Mm -hmm. I can also, I had a teacher, uh, I trained with a shaman for a number of years, and he would say, you know, there's nothing wrong with smoking or drinking heavily, if you're honest about why you do it. Mm -hmm. He said, if you tell yourself that you smoke, that you're a chain smoker because you like to smoke, he believed that it wasn't true because he said that he had never met anyone that told them when they had their first <laughs> smoke that they said my gosh this is delicious mm -hmm. this is the best thing i've ever tasted in my life most of us that have tried smoking know that it, it takes a long time to train yourself mm -hmm. to get over the nausea the coffee <laughs> and all of that to be able to it, it, it's really a long-term training to get yourself to mm -hmm. do that so if you've chosen to smoke fine or if you've chosen to drink, or if you've chosen to eat unhealthy, all of that is fine. But another perspective would be to say, yes, I do enjoy smoking, and I have chosen mm -hmm. to die mm -hmm. probably from complications of smoking. Mm -hmm. My teacher, the shaman that I trained would say, say that you smoke, chain smoke because you like it, that's a problem. Saying that you chain smoke because you like it and you're okay with dying from the complications of smoking, that's healthy. <laughs> so that's one of the steps is to be okay with what you're doing and <clears throat> maybe to think about how you're dying. Because every day with every decision to, we make, we're not only choosing how we're living, we're also choosing how we're going to die. Mm -hmm. And of course, we can also talk about what are we doing with our family because they're the mm -hmm. ones that get to see us die. Yes. Yes. And I'll tell you that, um, that's, that's very important. That's a lesson that I learned, um, in my twenties, late twenties, when my grandfather was, um, passed away, he had diabetes and they, the last two years of his life, he had kidney failure. And so they put him on a strict diet and which my mom, uh, tried to help him. And that's why they say that it extended his life for two years, but any time he could, he cheated, you know, he was just, mm -hmm. my mom could find him like at the, at the taco stand or like, you know, with his uh, eating <laughs> sugar or whatever it was, he was finding a way to cheat. But in the end, it's very important to say that they chose him how to die. It was the most horrific death that I seen because he literally, you know, his kidneys fail. And once your kidneys fail, mm. you know, they couldn't do dialysis anymore because it was so advanced. It's like you're dying slowly and that's how he chose to do it. And like you said, I mean, it was very painful for us, not just for him, but for us to sit there for eight weeks and watch him go through that, mm. you know? And I wonder if he would have asked himself that question every time he went to the taco stand or to eat a piece of pie, you know, how am I, am I choosing to die this way? If he would have cha changed, uh, she would have changed, you know, and chosen differently. You know, it's very interesting that you say that because one, one question that I've always had that I've, I've always wanted to ask people, but I, to this day, I've never been, I guess I never had the strength to, to ask anyone is uh, to ask someone that, for example, that smokes heavily, that chain smokes to ask them, have you decided that it's okay for you to die from the company? You know, that smoking is bad. Mm -hmm. Have you actually made a choice to die from that? Very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other, the other thing that, that, uh, we can do is, is to make a change, mm -hmm. right? To decide, well, I want to be healthier. I want to live a healthier life. Perhaps I want to have a, a more pleasant death and not put my family through a painful, you know, dying experience. What can I do? There's three things that we can do. First of all, observe your life. Notice how you feel. Notice how you feel when you get up in the morning. Notice how you feel after drinking, after smoking. Just notice how you feel. And then change something. Mm -hmm. Anything. When I work with clients individually, I help them figure out what they can change and what they can look at and uh, when, what, what, what signs they can look for to see uh, what direction the changes are going. And, <clears throat> but in general, I would say just change something. And then observe again. Mm -hmm. Are you still tired in the morning when you get up? If you're still tired, then maybe the change that you made wasn't the correct one. Mm -hmm. Are you more tired? Then definitely it wasn't the correct change. 
Are you feeling less tired? Well, that's it. that could be an indication that you're making changes in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So the three things to do is observe first, change something, anything, and then observe again and see what, the, what direction those changes are taking you in. And then, again, you can choose to change or not. And if you change, again, observe, mm -hmm. change, and observe. And like you said earlier, also give it time, right? Because we're in a society where we expect immediate results. And, and you're, what you said earlier about certain parts of the body healed at a, di a different rate, yes you, um, yes, you could see it, that there's an improvement in continuing going that way, but be patient. Because a lot of people is like, oh, you know, it's been a week and I, and I got better, but I'm yes. not perfectly. And then they give up and they're back at, oh, the yes. house, you know, they go backwards and it's like, just wait a little bit longer. <laughs> you know? Yes. You know, we, we, I learned to always tell people because of the right, the red blood cells taking 120 days to change. I tell people uh, the white blood cells take between a week or two. I say, you know, if, if you make a change within a week or two, you should see some changes. Mm -hmm. If you don't, do it for four months. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you should see some changes for four months. And I hear a lot of people say, oh, I tried this, but I tried it for a month or I tried mm -hmm. it for two months and it didn't make any changes. You know, part, part of this idea of making a, a choice, um, you know, we say that somebody suffers from cancer or somebody suffers from kidney disease or, 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 or suffers from asthma. Do you know what the word suffer means? No. L look it up sometime. Look up the etymology. It means to allow to happen. Oh, my God. Wow. So if you say, I suffer from cancer, that wow. means... You, have, you are saying that you are allowing the cancer to wow. continue. If you suffer from depression, you're really saying that you have chosen to let it continue. Isn't that, that interesting? It's super interesting. And you're, yeah, you're, you're giving your power to that. The other thing when I hear people say, my diabetes, my heart condition, my whatever, fibromyalgia, it's like, it's not yours, <laughs> you know, it, I feel like they're taking, they taking it in, and they own it now, and so they're stuck with it, because it's theirs, and, and I think everything starts with how you speak, and so that's fascinating, what you said, what suffering means, it's, wow, it's allowing yourself to go through that, it's fascinating. And we can either um, suffer unknowingly ignoring the facts that if I continue to smoke like this or drink like this or eat like this, that it can lead to a condition or I can consciously choose. Yes. I want to die from complications mm -hmm. of alcohol drinking. You know, many, if not all of the, of the great spiritual teachers, uh, in, in, in a way the, the many of the gurus of health have died from a, a condition. Mm -hmm. Michio Kushi, the father of macrobiotics, died of pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Tibetan master that wrote the Tibetan Book of Living and Dying died from alcohol complications. Uh, I know he died from uh, 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 large intestine cancer. You know, the, the Tibetan master that wrote the Shambhala Sacred Path of the Wire, the warrior, he died from alcohol complications. Carlos Castaneda, the way of the shaman, he also died, I, I believe, from diabetes. Or something. You know, so my question would be, if I could interview them, is did you actually choose? Was it okay for you to die? Uh, in Tibetan perspective, they say to die a powerful death. Mm -hmm. And when you're dying, you say, oh, my gosh, I'm so happy. <laughs> I wanted to die from, you know, liver disease. And I'm dying from liver disease. I did, did it. it. Oh, my gosh, I'm so amazing. <laughs> you know, can you imagine having that kind of power in your life? Wow. Uh, you know, so the other thing that you know, we're, we're talking about, uh, what I can do if, if, if I find that I'm, that I'm not healthy, I think a really important thing to do is uh, to come to terms with that. Mm -hmm. To come to terms with the idea that whether we're healthy or not, we're all going to die, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I always like to say jokingly, but I'm also very serious about it. Uh, that the number one cause of death is life, <laughs> right? If you're alive, you're going to die. Yes. No matter what you do. Yes. Right. And according to that, one of the definitions that I gave of health of, uh, at the beginning, uh, you know, the, the health is really the day, the rate at which we die. Yes, that's true. Right. Mm -hmm. Interesting. You, you were mentioning uh, athletes. We were talking about athletes a little while ago. And, and I'm really confused about these extreme sports. 
You know, you see these people do these extreme, amazing things with their bodies. So many of them die so young. Mm -hmm. Not that it's right or wrong, mm -hmm. but you know, it's, it's interesting. It's something to think about, right? Yeah, so how do you, when you're in clinic, how do you help clients um, identify if they're, if they're healthy? You touched a little bit on it, but uh, how do you help them, um, you know, to find out what to do and, and to take them through the process of healing? You know, of all the definitions that I gave of health, I, I, I explained to them about the, the roots of the word health, healing, holy, and how it comes from being sacred, becoming a whole human being. But, but the one definition that I really go by is, is um, do we heal in a timely manner? Mm. Do we have appropriate emotional responses to, to our experiences in life? And do we have energy to live our everyday life experiences without having to drink coffee or take energy drinks or anything like that? And that's what I tell people to really look at. Uh, when I was talking earlier, uh, you know, what we can do if I'm not healthy, when I said observe, change, and observe, uh, for me, really, it, it, it comes back to those three things. Am I healing in a timely manner? If it's true mm -hmm. that, you know, all of our skin cells are replaced in four weeks and our stomach lining is replaced in five days and things like that. If those are true, I'm not a scientist. I don't know. I can only go by what other people mm -hmm. that these studies say. Then that, that gives me a really specific, uh, what's the word, a, a barometer to look at. If I make a necessary ch a change, am I healing in a, in a timely manner? If I get a cut, is it healing in a timely manner? How do I respond to things that happen in my life? Uh, you know, like I, like I said earlier, some, something can say, somebody can say something to us or do something to us. It takes five seconds to do, and two years later, a decade later, you know, people that haven't spoken to their mother or their brother for decades because of something they did when, when they were young, mm -hmm. you know, that's, from this perspective, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but from this perspective, it's, it's not an appropriate emotional response, mm -hmm. and when you make a change, how is your energy when you wake up in the morning? Do you have energy to deal with, with people? Do you have enough energy to do your job? You know, people work now, and they get home, and they're they're too exhausted to spend time with their partner. They're too exhausted to spend time with their kids. We, we read stories about old Taoists that woke up uh, when the sun rose to go to work and they work until the sun came down. And when they got home, they still had time to make more children and play with their children and to have social activities, you know, and they didn't drink coffee like we do. Mm -hmm. So what I do with my clients is I really focus on those three questions. Do you heal in a timely manner? Do you have appropriate responses to emotional responses to your life? And do you have enough energy to live your everyday life activities? And it's very interesting. People, a lot of times, I see this on Facebook, where they, they, cho they, they choose to, to live a, a healthier life. And, they, and they, they list sometimes 10, sometimes 15, 20 different things that they're avoiding. The coffee's nowhere there. And when I say to people, well, what about coffee? They say, oh, no, don't touch my coffee. <laughs> yes. I'm willing to give this up, but don't touch my coffee, right? So if you make a change and, and that, that change allows you to cut back on the coffee, mm -hmm. then that's a positive change. And so what I do with my clients is I, I, I take them through the process, first of all, of, of, of helping them define what health really means and, of course, guiding them in the direction of, of not that this perspective is right compared to other ones, but because it's the one that I like, the one that I subscribe to, uh, guide them in the perspective of, the, of the vet, developing this sacredness about their lives and really getting to the point where taking care of their life becomes the number one most important mm -hmm. activity as a human being. And once they do that and they have developed a, a good definition of health, uh, I help them to refine it as time goes by. And, and then, of course, I ask them to look at how, how mm -hmm. healthy are you? How, how fast are you healing if you cut yourself, uh, if, if, you, if you do anything like this? And uh, are your emotional responses to life? And do you have enough energy to live your everyday life activity without stimulants? I love it. It is simple. But it is so true and so helpful. I think I'm going to write those three questions and put it on my fridge so I see them every day and question myself that because it's, it's such a, it's, it's basic, but it is 
it's something we all need to be asking us. And I, I am so happy you were here today with us and share that. And I think uh, if everybody will find it very helpful. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a, again, it's a, it's a pleasure and a, a real, real privilege to be here with you today. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I hope to have you back on the show soon. Anytime, of course. Thank you.